I just want to say how sorry I was to hear the passing of Marcus King. Um, he, he was just such a wonderful man. I had the privilege to meet him about a year ago. And um, I also had the privilege to uh, adjourn session last Monday, Monday in his honor. That was a real privilege, so thank you. Um, but anyway, so my name is Terry Van Dyne, and I represent uh, Buffalo County in the North Carolina Senate. And um, I just have to tell you, you know, my most important message today is thank you. Uh, it's been kind of tough for Democrats uh, since, since around 2010. And 2016 was a particularly difficult year, but I want you to know that it, at the same time it was hard, you guys did something amazing. And that is, you elected an amazing Democrat as governor of North Carolina, and I could not be more grateful to you. He has put extraordinarily competent people in his cabinet, and he is, he is doing a great job every single day, in spite of the impediments that Republicans still keep trying to put in his way. So you did that. Every single vote counted in that election, and thank you for doing that. So what Governor Cooper did after he um, got elected was he realized he couldn't do it alone. And so he and you and myself and the Democratic Party, we set this extraordinarily audacious goal for 2018. And that was to have a candidate in every single district to stand up for our progressive values and to challenge Republicans with a, a challenge them on the bad votes they've taken and the terrible legislation they passed. And you know what? We did it. We had 120 um, candidates in the House and 50 in the Senate. And because of all that hard work, um, we uh, recruited over 10,000 volunteers who made half a million door knocks and over a million phone calls. And you know what? Because of all that work, we were able to, one, uh, defeat two horrible Amendment. So it would have taken more power away from the governor and would have put us in a position where the legislature could have packed our Supreme Court. That would have been wrong. Thank you for that. But we also elected Anita Earls, a truly fabulous, um, compassionate, committed to social justice uh, woman to our Supreme Court. Uh, they really tried to rig that election, but we were smarter than they are. And, and, and we got her elected, so thank you for, for that. But for my job, the most important thing you did was you helped break the supermajority in both the House and the Senate. And that means we have a seat at the table, and I can't tell you how important that is. So now, before I was a senator, I worked, uh, I was a coder, okay? I did that for 20 years. And you know, there's a little bit of math involved in that. And so, and you probably know too that four plus one makes five. Well, in the Senate, um, if we can pick up four more seats, plus the lieutenant governor, that means we have a tied Senate, and the lieutenant governor is the tiebreaker. And that gives us the majority. So, what are we going to do with that majority? You know, those, those, those really wonderful progressive principles that we, that we ran on, we're going to be able to implement those things. So I just want you to know that I have been working um, I have been with for two, um, uh, two of my terms, and as with, I kind of led the charge to find those candidates and fund those candidates and support those candidates. Um, I uh, have been fighting for you since 2014 against horrible legislation that just seeks to 
disrespect our teachers. I was at NCAA just yesterday talking with a bunch of teachers. And sure, they would like to be paid better, but you know what they care about so much more than that? They want to be able to do their jobs. And they don't have the textbooks they need. They don't have the supplies they need. They don't have the teacher assistants they need, or even the classrooms. We could do such a better job for them. Um, and so uh, what I'm asking you for today is it's kind of tough, you know, coming from the West. Charlotte's got a much bigger voter base, and Raleigh's got a much bigger, bigger voter base. But I'm telling you, um, I want to be that fifth vote, okay, that we need to have the majority in the Senate so that I can stand up for you and actually vote for raising teacher pay to at least the national average and making education our number one priority again. I want to be able to vote to protect a woman's right to make her own health care decisions. I want to be able to vote to end gerrymandering so that everyone's vote counts. Um, that's the way it should work. And finally, I want to vote to expand Medicaid. Because what I know from working with is that when people can't afford to go to the doctor, they suffer needlessly. Um, I saw it every single day. And we could expand Medicaid to 600,000 people in this state and help them live fuller lives. Not only that, but one of the things we know is the South as a region is overrepresented in terms of hospital closures. And there have been six hospital closures in North Carolina alone. That is unacceptable. What we also know is that there are three southern states that have had no hospital closures. And that they are um, uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, and West Virginia. You know what those three states have in common? They took the Medicaid expansion. So it's good for our people. It's good for our hospitals. And also, what we also know about the states that have taken Medicaid expansion is that it keeps um, health care rates, it keeps insurance rates down for all of us. So it's a win, 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 win. And we need to do it. So because of your hard work, um, I want to be the person that helps vote to get Medicaid expansion. So um, we have a lot of work to do. But you know, the end is in sight. We can see our way, our path, to actually having the majority. And we're turning North Carolina to the state that was the beacon of the South in terms of policies that that give people a leg up. And how do we do that? We do that through investing in education. That's in our DNA. We get that. Um, we've lost our way a little bit with this Republican majority. We need to get back to that. We need to fully fund Smart Start, fully fund pre-K, fully fund K through 12 education, fully fund our community colleges and our universities so that we can be a top 10 educated state. We need to protect our clean air and clean water and make sure that we are holding polluters accountable and that they clean up their own messes and not pass that off to the taxpayer. Um, we don't need to be doing that. So um, that's what I want to do. And I'm going to need your help to do it. Uh, I don't have the, the, the base of support that the candidates coming from Mecklenburg and coming from uh, Wake have. So I need your help. And I just hope you will 
like me on Facebook. I don't know why that's a thing, but I am told that that is a thing. Um, and check out my website, votevandine.com, and tell your friends that um, if I'm lieutenant governor, not only have I been fighting for them, but I will continue to fight for them. Uh, so my name is Terry Van Dyne, and I am just so grateful for the opportunity to speak with you, and I will see you on the campaign trail. Thank you very much.